My name is David Chimot. I'm uh, managing Unitronics Motion Product Line, which includes several systems and VFDs. Today, I'm going to introduce you our existing VFD solution. We will talk about the operation using communication perception. Um, I'll make a short demo and I'll even tell you what's expected to come. If you have any questions during your session, you can always ask by using the question section at the right side of your screen. Okay, I'll try to address these questions at the end of the webinar. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Unitronics VFDs. I want to start with our recommended system architecture. At the heart of it, you can find one of many PLCs we're offering. It could be uh, Unistream or Vision, but mostly we'll talk about the Unistream series. Uh, it could be with or without HMI, it doesn't matter. We're known in offering many various communication channels and protocols from MQTT and LPC UA that communicates with the upper layer and our UniCloud solution, which was released lately, to serial and Ethernet ports like RS-232, 485, and Profibus. Uh, can open and Modbus are also available. Ethernet IP and Ethercat uh, can be used as well. So this architecture guarantees maximum capabilities with minimum effort. Now, because it's a webinar about the VFD and how we see VFDs, let's talk about our VFD product line. So Unitronics VFDs are simple to use and easy to program. And from the hardware point of view, our VFDs offer built-in EMI filters uh, for some of the models, the majority of them. We offer a broad range of operation temperatures. We have a built-in braking units um, up to 37 kilowatts, if I'm not mistaken. We have a heavy-duty overload capacity that reaches up to 200 percentage of rated current. Our VFDs offer a coded PCBs. Coded PCBs means that dust penetration damage that can occur over time will be minimized dramatically by this code. Um, in addition to that, we have a built-in RS-485 over Modbus TARTU field bus in the, each drive without having any additional module or cost needed. Uh, our control method that the VFD supports can vary from vector control and torque control, hertz, volt per hertz control, and so on. Um, our VFDs have uh, an STO input inputs. These STO are SEAL3. It means they were tested and verified with a high level of, uh, of, of certainty and safety. In addition to that, we offer accessories for mounting, like wall mounting, flange mounting, or rail. Optional communication and I.O. extensions are also available for some of the drives, so we'll discuss it in the next slide. Um, our VFDs have UL and Canadian UL approval. Uh, they were tested by TUV and they're all CE certified. These capabilities are divided into three product families. The product families are uh, B1, the ULB1, the EUB1, and the ULB5. Now let's take a few seconds to explain what's the difference and what each product family uh, allows you to have. Okay, so in terms of power, the ULB1 offers you a range between 400 watts to 2.2 kilowatts, okay? Um, in three phases, in three uh, voltage levels. The first level is 220, let's say 240 volts with a single phase. Uh, it offers you a three phase of 240. Um, and three phase of 480 as well, okay? Um, this product, fa product family is uh, UL certified and CE certified as well. The European B1, the EU B1, offer broader range from 400 watts to 500 kilowatts uh, with voltage levels between a single phase 240 to uh, two phase 240 and eventually up to a uh, three phase 480. Now, the 480 and the UL certification for the European B1 are supported from a uh, power rating of between 400 watts to 11 kilowatts including. 
Okay, so above that, the European B1, the EU B1 does not support UL certification and supports up to a voltage level of 440. Okay, that's why we have this mark because it's up to 11 kilowatts. If you need more than that, you can always use our B5 product line. The B5 product line offer a range that comes from 700 watts, 750 watts to um, 500 kilowatts with three voltage levels as well. And three phase uh, 240, three phase 480, and three phase 600 volts, okay? And these drives are UL, uh, Canadian UL and C certified. Uh, they also offer some additional features and, and capabilities like supporting and controlling permanent magnet motors. Uh, they also support extended I.O. cards, so we can extend the, uh, the, uh, the existing I.O.s that are already extended compared to the B1 with additional cards for controlling over I.O.s. And it also uh, provides you with the option to extend or change the communication protocol from Modbus RTU to uh, CAN communication, okay? Now, these are the existing product lines. Because the topic of the webinar would be Unitronics VFDs and how, and, and as I mentioned, the perception about working over communication, I would like to talk about uh, the system level. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit for the system level. We highly recommend using communication for the entire system. Because of that, I want to remind you all what are the advantages and disadvantages for doing so. So the advantages of using over communication, using control components, regardless of VFDs in particular, but we can also address VFDs as such. Okay, first of all, in our VFDs, you can change the operation modes, you can change the drive parameters, you can remotely configure drives. So if you need to replace a drive because it was damaged or uh, something happened, it will have some malfunctions. So you can replace the drive and the entire configuration can be sent automatically over the communication with no effort to the operator. In addition to that, you can monitor the drive actual state uh, and by working over communication, you minimize the wiring needed and cost of it. Also, it reduces the amount of required IOs, especially eliminate the need for expensive analog IOs, okay? Because the entire control can be done over communication. Um, be, due to that, also improves the reliability and the EMI robustness of your system since communication uh, is much more robust for these kind of failures. So if you send a broadcast and you got no response, you can always send it back. While when you send an analog sing signal and, it, uh, uh, and some noise interrupts it, so the command that the drive will see will be defective and it might act different and not as you expected it to, to okay now what are the disadvantages of you of using communication i mean the advantage advantages are great so why not the reason in why not using communication is that first of all simply the um the setup is more complex for communications not only the wiring and, and, and the shielding and so on i mean the entire setup in a system connecting to a controller, that's complex and, and that requires some expertise, okay? Um, because of that, integration time is usually high for these kind of work methods. So if you look on the VFD main market, uh, you would see many customers and many users use this VFD over IO. And then you should ask yourself, why? I mean, they can use communication. And the reason is the complexity and the integration time. So what we did in Unitrox, after we covered the meaning for the communication-based control, I think we can all agree that the ideal solution would be all the good without the effort. Right? That's exactly what we're trying to do. By using our solution, we improve your control flexibility, we reduce the hardware and the installation cost, we increase the system reliability, Communication is handled automatically by us, by our PLC, with our software, uh, uh, which is, by the way, a unified software environment. So we don't have to learn and invest time and training of your people or yourself in different platforms and different 
uh, uh, software tools. All you need to know is one. And that minimizes the complexity by and reduces your development time. So eventually, it, it, it's not only it's superior, it's also easier. So you get all the good with a single solution. So that's what we're doing. We're bringing the best of all worlds. Now, how it looks like. And after I'll explain, I'll make a short demonstration. First of all, UniLogic enables you easy implementation of VFD logic without the needing communication integration at all. And I'll show it to you. What we're going to do, we're going to add a VFD. We're going to link it to a communication port. We're going to create configurations and download them during runtime. We can use leather elements and leather blocks uh, to commission the VFD or send commands or parameters and so on. And we can get all the VFD statuses automatically by, by enabling a single bit. And now let's make a short demonstration. Okay, so this is UniLogic. This is the, uh, the application itself. I would like to start from the upper layer. Right now I've selected uh, a PLC. This is a modular PLC. Okay, so after you're selecting a modular PLC, what you should do, you should go to PLC communication at the left side of the screen. Um, you should go to physical layer and you have the serial com, double click it. Here on the serial com, you can select the serial com you want to use. Sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. So it's already selected as the VFD. You can also define the baud rate and so on. Yeah, let me expand that a little bit to the left. Yeah, here. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that, that's that's here. So you can define if this is a VFD port or it's a Modbus or something else like TXRX and so on. These are predefined. So if you just select the VFD, the default units and, and values for our VFD solution are already deconfigured. Okay. So after we've done that, what we can do, we can go to hardware configuration again under motion drives. Select a VFD. Under VFD, you by clicking it, you find a toolbox with the, the three families I just showed you: the ULB1, the EUB1, and the ULB5. Right here, I have a, an EUB1. Let's add another drive just for the example. That's a B5. Okay, double click it. You get a Modbus ID. You set this Modbus ID to your drive and you select the COM port. Now communication is set. You don't need to do anything else regarding the communication. The next thing you can do, you can define configuration. Let's go inside the configuration. Here I already made a configuration for a four kilowatts drive. Let's make another one. Let's take this B5 series and we'll select 18 kilowatts drive. Okay, that's a drive I've selected named configuration one. When we click and get, try to get inside, what we'll see is this. Okay, we got a list of parameters divided by numbers according to what the VFD can support or provides with configuration capabilities. So here we have the fast configuration. Under the fast configuration, you can find all the parameters that are the most common one to use and change. Okay, it can be the run command channel or speed control mode or acceleration time or current, uh, motor current and jogging speed and so on. Everything is here, okay? Let's say you change something, okay? Let's say you change the uh, BFD control mode to vector control, okay? Now you'll have at the top the modified parameters. Here you get a list of all the parameters you modified that are not these the, the, the predefined values. So when you want to download this configuration, you can select download modified and instead of downloading all the parameters, 
and, and, and wait time for it. You'll just download the relevant parameters and save you some time. Okay, so currently I made two configurations. I can have more as much as you would like to have. Okay, then you go to the letter. Under at the letter, you can see a few things. First of all, I can enable the communication with right setting the bit on. You see, this is a general letter initial cycle. So when the PLC goes on, then I added a condition to set the bit VFD1 enable communication. Let's say now we have VFD2. So I can set where is the set? Set call. And let's use VFD to enable communication. Okay, so now when the PLC will start, it will enable communication for both VFDs. On this run, what we see is that we define the button that when the VF, when it's enabled, we toggle the periodic status read. So it will start reading the VFD status. Okay, let's show you what's inside the VFD status. Okay, let's go to VFD1. Inside VFD1, we see this bit for enabled communication. That's the bit for enabling periodic uh, uh, read, status read. That's the VFD status, okay? Um, in addition, you can see some other parameters like, like vector control or VF control or some some other relevant parameters. These are the options defined at the uh, configuration, okay? So these are all in the VFD struct. This data is accessible and you can do whatever you need. Now let's talk about programming, okay? So we understand we got the option to communicate. If this is working, we have communication. Okay, so what can we do with it? Let's sort the word VFD. So these are all VFD functions uh, from VFD run frequency mode to um, auto-tune that could be executed over communication to jogging or stop jogging or write configuration and read configuration and store configuration. Everything is here, okay? So these are all the commands you can use with, the, with your VFD. I uh, added a short example here at rank number three. You can see a tag that uh, enables the VFD to run frequency at the frequency of 40 hertz, okay? On the negative direction, the status for doing that is here at this tag, and we reset it after execution. So it's a, a single shot like execution, and then the VFD will start running fre frequency. What happens if we want to stop? Okay, so you take the VFD stop, you add a tag before it, add a tag. Okay, and let's reset this tag at the end. Let's call it stop. Sorry. Let's stop. and reset this top. Now we select the VFD we want to stop, VFD number one, and the status, stop, status, okay? That's it. So we added a run frequency command and a stop. I lost it, okay? So that's a simple use of your VFD. While you can monitor everything, you can read everything, you can do whatever you want, okay? I'll go back to my presentation now. Okay, so now I want to discuss the next topic, what's coming soon, okay? Um, so what's coming next is this. In order to improve the ease of use, I should just share with you, uh, not only the product of the system point of view, as I mentioned, we're now developing another tool we found to be very useful. 
on the servo. So uh, since we saw a good customer feedback, a good experience from the servo product line, we decided we'll do that in the VFD. So we will soon have a new VFD automatic application and screens. This application will allow you full control for the communication state, the stop and reset errors. It will allow you to extend configuration capabilities and, and configure things using your HMI directly without having any need in program. It will also allow you digital and analog IO monitoring so you can read values and see what, have, what all happens there. Um, all the motion commands are going to be uh, allowed and will have screens for it. Uh, and all the autotune methods, depending on the VFD you selected, will be supported there as well. Okay, so that's a tool for the way that has a purpose to ease your integration. Okay, so that's coming very soon. I thought I will be able to show you that tool the, during this webinar. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not done yet, but it's not while till, until it will be ready. So we'll get uh, that on your Unilogic and you'll be exposed to it. Okay, in addition to that, we're working on offering VFDs over Ethernet communications for those who want. It could be Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP, or Ethercat. And uh, they are all supported, will be supported. Uh, and in addition, another capability we came across uh, sometimes is a closed loop need. Maybe it's because you need a zero speed with holding torque, or you want a position control and so on. So this will all be uh, added on the next feature and capabilities of our VFD product line. Now, I want to mention something. Um, since these are under development right now, if you have an existing need in these capabilities, please contact your sales managers and tell them I sent you. Okay? No, I, 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 I mean it. If you have something that you know coming up and you might need some of these capabilities, let us know and we'll see if we can uh, uh, release these things for you sooner, okay? So, um, just to sum it up all, uh, the, all the goods Unitronics VFD solution is offering, uh, we're offering a single supplier, okay, for your PLCs and your HMIs and your VFDs, IOs, communication with the OT level, with the IT level, cloud solution, servos, everything by a single supplier for your, your machine, to work perfectly with ease of integration, okay? Um, our VFD should be cost-effective and should be highly available, okay? So not only we reduce I.O. modules, the cost-effectiveness also reduces the expensive I.O.s from your system by working over communication. Okay, so overall, all to all, it should save you a pretty decent amount of money. Okay, and the communication, which we talked about, that provides good benefits, also provides you with the option to work seamlessly. Okay, you just saw in Unilogic, I did nothing to communicate with my drive. Okay, connect a wire, define a, a, an ID, and that's it. Change the bit to on, to, to true, that's it. And all of that is offered with a single software platform, which is award-winning and easy to use. So that's our solution. Thank you for joining me today, guys. I hope you'll have a great day, and I hope you enjoy the webinar. Bye.